if I can point to any one thing where what Terrence and I did, I mean, we, we've been out there, we do lectures, we publish books and so on. But if I have to single out any one thing that actually made a difference, I think it was the publication of this book, you know, which we didn't even publish under our real names. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> if, anyway, so, so that book made quite a difference. And uh, I, uh, uh, I, I, I was growing mushrooms just for my own, you know, edification and the delight of my friends and this kind of thing. I went to the University of Hawaii in 1976 to uh, to uh, start a degree in ethnobotany, and uh, I was going to work on the Hawaiian acacias out there thinking I would study the uh, the tryptamines of the Hawaiian acacias, because acacia is another genus of trees that's very well known for its tryptamines. Turns out the Hawaiian acacias are completely without oh, alkaloids. Wow. <laughs> so I, I ended up studying the acacias, and I, I studied chemotaxonomy and based on their non-protein amino acids. and But it was okay, because at the University of Hawaii, a couple of things happened. One, I had access to a laboratory and an opportunity to kind of learn phytochemistry, even though I wasn't working on psychedelics. I could learn the techniques of phytochemistry. And I had a fantastic mentor. My, my supervisor was uh, an incredible renaissance man, a out-of-the-box thinker. He was actually studying extraterrestrial life among other things he had wow. grants from nasa <laughs> wow. robert yeah. Mack, or was it mac um what was his name uh, uh, uh San yeah, right. sandy C sanford siegel oh sanford oh, siegel okay sanford siegel. Sanford. yeah yeah and he was he was into stress physiology which is why he had these grants from nasa because he was simulating extraterrestrial environments like you know the conditions on the surface of mars for example you know the radiation uv flux this sort of thing easy enough to duplicate in a in a terrarium you know and he would ask these simple simple questions that that yielded lots of data like for example how does how well does a tarantula tolerate martian conditions in this <laughs> Turns out they're not phased by it at all. Oh you wow! Know? They live for months. They Mars thrive. Is full of them. <laughs> yeah, and and they just you know they can get along. Or so he was. He was a. Uh, he encouraged my work. He he wasn't psychedelic, you know, uh, in it himself, but he knew about them, and he was not. You know, he he was not close-minded about it at all. You know, he was a biologist, and he realized this was important. So, but he taught me a lot in terms of just thinking in ways that you normally wouldn't think about these things. And it was the way that he approached science that was really an inspiration to me. And, and then out of that, you know, came uh, uh, he used to anytime a visiting scientist or somebody would come through town, he being the kind of mentor he was, he'd invite all the graduate students up to his house. We'd sit around and have beer and pizza and shoot the breeze with this person, you know, just talk shop basically. So one of these times he invited his friend from British Columbia, Dr. Neil Towers to come and, and Neil and he had worked together and and I met Dr. Towers, and and in the course of one of these sessions, he he let it slide that he had that 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 he had a master's degree student that was working on psilocybin, and tried to characterize one of the enzymes in the pathway, you know. And I thought, aha, th this is the opportunity I've been waiting for, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, without trying to spit my beer all over the place or anything. I just sort of said, well, hmm, that's very interesting, Dr. Towers. I've, I've been interested in that too. And, uh, you know, and maybe you'd consider taking me on because this, this other graduate student is not 
is about to leave and hasn't made much project and progress. And he said, sure, let's talk about it. And we did. And he, he uh, arranged for me to get a fellowship, a four-year fellowship. So I moved to Canada and that's, I started my, uh, I started my research at UBC on Celestia Cubensis.